Today I'll be unboxing a brand new product from Corsair. This is the Corsair Cooling Air Series A70. This is a high performance CPU cooler. And uh, so just to, this isn't Corsair's first foray into cooling. We had the H50 before, which I have previously unboxed on my channel. So this was a high performance CPU cooler, but this one is water. So it's H for probably hydro. Yes, there. And so this is A for air. Excellent, air series. So it's compatible with LGA 775, 1156, 1366, as well as AMD, AM2, and AM3. So pretty much any modern socket is going to be well supported by the A70. Let's have a look at what we've got on the side of the box. So there's your dimensions, fan speeds, and it's in a bunch of different languages. So you can go ahead and pause the frame if you happen to be... Oh boy, I don't know what language that is. Okay, well, moving on. Here's the back where they talk a little bit about the way that the H, H50, see there, I was about to say it, the way that the A70 handles fan speed. So dramatically outperforms your CPU stock heatsink. Here they're showing the performance, but not the, hmm, they're not showing the noise. I guess that doesn't really matter because they already gave us the noise specs on the other side. So four eight millimeter copper direct contact heat pipes. So those are quite a bit bigger than the standard six mil ones. So it uses aluminum fins as well as dual 120 millimeter fans. So that's one of the advantages that the A70 has over the, uh, its younger brother is the fact that it includes dual 120 millimeter fans as well as one additional heat pipe so let's get the box open here i'm going to go ahead and zoom that back out and let's start unwrapping this guy have a look at what we've got in store for ourselves here now i mentioned the noise of the fans i mean it's not something i'm overly concerned about because from the fan included with the h50 to all the fans included with the 800d case uh, Corsair has done a good job of sourcing their fans, and they tend to be quite quiet and move a decent amount of air, so like I said, yeah, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. So inside the A70, we find two boxes. I'm going to go ahead and go with the small one first, and I'm going to guess that that's what contains the heatsink. I'm just kidding. That's a terrible guess. Obviously, this contains the accessories, so let's see what we got for accessories inside the box here. Two fans. That is all. Oh, okay, I like this. So they come with kind of a shroud style uh, clip that goes right onto the heat sink. You can see you've got four clips, one, two, three, four, just like that. Another effect that the shroud has is that it keeps the fan slightly separated away from the cooler, I guess in theory. Actually, why don't I find out if that's true first? But what a shroud would do if it did keep it separate from the cooler is it would reduce the dead spot in the middle because the fan blades spin like this. So if they're blowing air through a heat sink, they're obviously not blowing any air here. But if you move it away, then it can actually blow some of the air sort of this way because it just sort of randomly blows air out. And the shroud also keeps it from escaping from the side. So you're using all of the airflow from the fan to cool the heat sink. Ah, okay, so there were two boxes, but one of them, I actually picked the big one. So this is the small box. So this, I'm going to guess, contains the mounting hardware. Okay, the first thing we find are, ooh, I like these. These are great. These are low-speed power uh, fan adapters. Uh, rather, I think they are. Okay, yeah, these look like uh, inline resistors to slow down the fans if you should desire to do so. And then this, oh, okay, this is an adapter so you can run both fans off your CPU header. As long as you have a half-decent motherboard made in the last 10 years or so, your CPU fan header should be able to handle a couple low-power fans like this. Next, we've got some A70 thermal compound, which I don't recognize the OEM for, unfortunately, sorry. And then we have, oh, it's quite heavy though, so it's probably a silver-based one. Next, we've got four thumb screws, four rubber washers, uh, and then two of these rubber fan mounts is what they're normally for, but I can't imagine that's for mounting the fans in this case. Here is the multi-adapter plate, so this is for LGA775, 1156 as well as 1366 you can see all three holes on there and this has got to be for am2 am3 yeah so that's where you're going to get your mounting pressure from you clip it on the one side clip it on the other side it's not coming off here's a little corsair guide why corsair talks a little bit about some of their other products thank you for that corsair and then next we have a backplate nice okay so you don't need a backplate on am2 am3 because amd has graciously made that part of their spec 
that every AM2 and AM3 board has a backplate already. So for Intel, you will need a backplate, and it does come with one. It's adjustable, although... I can't... Oh, yeah, oh, it's simpler than I thought. You just slide it. It just has a little, like, um... It has a little piece right here that sort of fits into the little notches so that it only slides so far. And, uh, yeah, that was more straightforward than I thought it was. Very nice. Very nice, Corsair. Very nice. Next, inside this foam, we have the cooler itself, finally. So, you know, third time's a charm. I'm guessing this is the cooler. Yes, success! Okay, here we will also find a quick start guide. So this is going to show you how to install your cooler, uh, regardless of which socket you want to install it on. That's probably too much thermal compound, for the record. I would use probably about half of that. Okay. Stop! Do not return this product to the store. Hey, I like that. Working at a retailer, it's always nice when the manufacturer takes charge of their own RMA service. So what it means basically to us is that they have a lot of confidence in their own service, that they feel that they can do an excellent job of taking care of a customer's concerns uh, before it gets to the point where they have to return the product to the store. So I guess it means that they feel they can probably resolve whatever issue they're having without uh, it coming to that. So here's some do not eat. Don't eat it. Next, we have the A70 itself. So you can see the fins are quite tightly packed, but that's going to be an advantage for a cooler like this because it does come with two fans. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can figure out how their clip system works. Yeah, you can see there are little notches right here. So that's going to be where the clips go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip one on and then I'll show you the other side. Oh, that was easy. Okay, so it's that easy to install the uh, the A70 fan, just like that. Okay, so let's have a look at the cooler itself. Let's peel this off, and we'll do the obligatory finger shot where we show the shininess, although I can pretty much guarantee it's not going to be very shiny. But it does appear to be quite flat. So this is a heat pipe direct touch heat sink. That means that rather than having a base clamped on top of the heat pipes and then having the heat pipes run through it, the heat pipes make direct contact with the CPU uh, heat spreader itself. So the disadvantage is that it's much harder to manufacture this way and it does end up being more expensive. And the advantage is that you have fewer transfer heat, fewer places where the heat has to be transferred between different materials. You're just going straight to the heat pipes which then transfer the heat to the fins and then it gets blown away to the air rather than to the base, to the heat pipe, to the fins and then away. So you're removing one step from the process. Um, I think I didn't explain why dense fins are good for a cooler like this and it's because it does include two fans so you've got lots and lots of static pressure regardless of um well okay not regardless of the fans you're using you got lots of static pressure so you're going to get lots of airflow through it even though the fins are stacked quite tight there that's what i was trying to say here are the four heat pipes it's very very obvious that these are thick heat pipes compared to some of the smaller ones that uh, you typically see, like here. Let me see if I can find something to compare it against really quick here. Maybe I have like a stock cooler in my bucket over here. Please tell me I got something. What do I have? Uh, I got some old Noctua heatsink. Ah yeah, okay, that'll do. So here. I think this is Noctua's original heatsink that they released like a hundred million years ago. So, um, if I could just get this sort of lined up here, then you could see that the heat pipes are much, much bigger. There you go. So it's more expensive to manufacture, costs more and more materials, and also transfers heat a lot better. What else did I want to say? Oh, by the way, it looks like the shrouds do work to a certain extent. They do separate the uh, fan itself from the cooler, but not by a whole lot. So I wouldn't rely on it to reduce your dead zone by too much, but with 120 millimeter fans, it's also not that big of a deal. I guess that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about. You got your little aluminum brick here, which uh, you attach the mounting hardware to, and now my cat's picking at the packing material. Let's cut that out. You cut that out. Okay, uh, last thing. Yes, I love this. Nice aesthetic on the top. You got just a nice black plate I mean, I like the, the shiny chrome finishes as well, but I also, this is going to look really sharp in a case like the 800D, where the entire inside is black. So now all you've got is a nice black finished top with just the copper from the heat pipe showing through. I really like the look of this cooler, and uh, while it is quite on the expensive side, I think it's going to have the performance to back it up. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Corsair A70.
and uh, that's my cat stealing the packing materials. Don't forget to subscribe to my Linus Tech Tips video blog, as well as to my NCIX Tech Tips channel, NCIXcom, and thank you for watching.